Hey everyone, I'm Chef Dennis, and we are here at session six of the third annual virtual bloggers conference live on Google Plus and YouTube. And we're here to talk about the new kids on the block for live streaming video, and that would be Meerkat and Periscope, or as I just said, Miroscope or Paracat or parakeets or something like that anyway but anyway we're gonna talk about them and how to use them how not to use them and try and give you some help in determining uh, which way you want to go with them and I think it's the wave of the future right now everything's kinda going live streaming so we want to jump on that bandwagon so first let's say hi to everybody and uh, coming in from the land down under I've got Vin Brown here how you doing Vin? Hello. Hey, I'm doing really well. It's um, 9.30 in the morning, so I'm bright and sparky. I've had some coffee, and it's I'm all raring to go. <laughs> bright and sparky. I love it. I haven't heard that before here, so that's a good one. I may have to try that. And, uh, yeah, I'm not bright and sparky because it's uh, 8 o'clock at night here. So I'm, <laughs> after the day I've had, I'm about ready to be tucked in. But I'm glad you're here and coming to us, and we hope some of your fellow countrymen are up and about or uh, watching, too. Yeah, I have so. I, I just tweeted tweeted out um, a link on and I'm broadcasting on Periscope so we'll see here we go very cool and then we've got Dustin Stout coming in from Los Angeles or where are you yes sir sunny Southern California about 30 minutes north of, of Los Angeles okay very good and uh, it's uh, you're three hours ahead so it's still early in the day for you oh uh, yeah it's about 501 in the afternoon so uh, it's about it's a good time of day for me. Good time of day. I like it. And Anna, I'm not sure where you are. Where are you besides here? <laughs> uh oh. Frozen Anna? Oh no. She's uh, frozen. Anna. Anna. Where are you? I'm sorry. Just whistle and I will come. I'll be fine. <laughs> where are you, Anna? The Bay Area. The Bay Area, that's right. Okay. So it looks like you're a little frozen right now, so hopefully you'll defrost a little. <laughs> All right, well, let's get this party started. And if you have questions for our presenters, please leave them in the comments section, and we'll pull them up, and we will address them as we go along. We've got a, a lot of people here. Uh, Eileen's here, and she said she just took a quick power nap, and she's back. Hi, Eileen. Glad to hear it. Kitchen, uh, Kitchen Shaman has come back for the last one. She was just over on Periscope watching. Scott Scowcroft is in the house. Candy is in the house. Sanjeev is here. Coach Moore is here. And where else? we got Kim Boltman, Michael Thomas. So we've got a, a nice full house already, and there's more coming our way. So let's talk about the new media, the new, the new way to connect. And the new to hotness. The new hotness. So what do you but want to tell us about me, So I don't know what that is about. Sorry, bad joke. Bad joke? Bad joke? <laughs> it's okay. Can you hear me, or I'm, like, out of the loop here completely? We can hear you. Okay, what good. I missed the first part of it, though. What was it? Oh, I said, the new hotness, and it's not me. I'm very upset. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we missed that first part. Missed that first part. Oh, that that's why you weren't laughing. I'm like, I'm losing it. I'm that's, okay, so here's what we can start talking about. The downfalls of live streaming is that sometimes the live stream doesn't come through and you miss the joke. <laughs> right, but then everybody pretends that they heard it anyway and they give out this awkward laugh, right? <laughs> that happens a bit. That's the truth, and that's like it, life and anything else, so I think we better learn to just ask if we haven't heard uh, so we can avoid those awkwardness. Okay. Uh, Richard Clarkson's starting us off with a question right away. He wants to know, is Periscope a big data user? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I know my yes. buddy Brian Fanzo has done a lot of uh, investigation on that side, and from what I can remember, I don't know... 100%, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's actually lower than most people would think as far as data consumption. I think his question was re regarding data consumption on the like data plans and the cellular data plans, that kind of thing. You guys heard anything differently? I have not tested enough to find out. I'm, I'm going to be, and uh, well, I guess we'll see when I get to... Uh to Ocean City where I do not have a, uh, a dedicated connection I have to use a hotspot so uh, but that's a very good question and I'm wondering how much battery it eats up too uh, with a phone 
So that's the other question, I would guess. I think a lot of things are wrong to begin with. Uh, but for instance, I just got um, new to me uh, Galaxy S5, and usually I would charge it maybe about once in three days. Uh, when I do Periscope, I'll charge it once a day. Maybe, you know, at the end of the night, I'll just plug it in. So it, I don't think it's really very bad. I mean, it does obviously consume both data and battery life, but it's not unbearable. Very good. All right, so who wants to start talking about either Meerkat or Periscope, and we will dive into it and uh, the pluses of using it. Dustin, you had written something on Meerkat since it was the first thing out there. Yeah, I, uh, I've actually... You know, when when the rumors started circulating about these live streaming apps, I got really interested because I've always done Hangouts on Air. I've I've loved broadcasting, and uh, you know, the, my biggest qualm with the industry has been it's always been so difficult. You know, with uh, with technology hangups and just uh, as much as I love Hangouts on Air and uh, would do them every day, several times a day if I could, uh, the technology is just too, too cumbersome, and the fact that uh, that Back at uh, South by Southwest this year, Meerkat debuted and sort of stole the show uh, of of South by Southwest. That's how I really got wind of it, and I got really excited about it right away. I jumped on, was was ex experimenting and investigating and tinkering as us technological people like to do. And uh, so yeah, right away I I did every, everything I can, learned as much as I could, wrote a guide uh, for our company Wheel Media. Uh, it's up on our blog. Uh, if you go to wheelmedia.com forward slash what is meerkat with uh, separated by hyphens, I believe that's it. Uh, you can always search, use a search function. But um, but yeah, it, it's a great platform. I'm actually broadcasting from it right now just for fun. It doesn't look like it's affecting my bandwidth at all. Um, like meerkat the, is very interesting. Go ahead. What is the, can you show it to us, please? Yeah, absolutely. Here, let me pull it out of my contraption here. And let me get really meta so you can see yourself. Here it is. No. I've got it connected to a power outlet. That the phone was sitting in. That was very curious. Was it like a tripod of some sort? This, this, is, a, this is a tripod and it's a very uh, good tripod. It's, it's kind of like a gorilla pod. So these legs are actually bendy and uh, I have to configure it so that it bends this way so that I can actually keep the phone propped up in, in portrait rather than landscape. Otherwise, it would just sit like this and be in landscape. And I've got a glyph attached to the, the top of it, and then it just kind of sits right in there like that while That's I'm broadcasting. Hello, Pear. I'm your cat. I need one of those. So far, I'm just holding my stuff like this with my hands, which oh, doesn't... Yeah, yeah that can well. be annoying. Yeah, definitely get a, a tripod. I, told, I was telling Dennis and... Um, Vin earlier that uh, this thing cost me twelve dollars on Amazon. The glyph, the thing that actually holds the phone, is about thirty dollars, and I highly recommend it because it's a wonderful little device. But um, but yeah, oh, it looks like I is that Eileen Smith here on Meerkat watching? Yes, it is. Hi, Eileen, you rock. Um, so yeah, Meerkat, really awesome. It's uh, what's interesting to me about it is it's run by a, you know it's a startup. It's not backed by Twitter. It's not backed by any big corporation. It is a startup company that, that wanted to uh, invest in this new uh, simple live streaming technology. And the fact that they are just cranking away, um, they're making updates left and right. They, they seem to be keeping ahead of Periscope uh, in a number of different realms. I mean, the integration with Twitter is much better than Periscope uh, in that uh, it's easy to just uh, have your viewers reshare the broadcast, but every time that they comment on the broadcast, that can actually be a reply to, to your original broadcast tweet that's sent out. So they're thereby building the authority of that original tweet and, and getting a lot more activity on your actual page uh, and your, your Twitter profile. Um, so it, to me, Meerkat is, is the scrappy underdog that I think is actually winning at this point. However, I am actually a little bit more inclined to... Uh, to be on Periscope more because they are backed by Twitter and because we know that uh, sooner or later that integration with Twitter will be there. Um, but at the moment, I feel like uh, feel like Meerkat is the winner. It's it's holding its own. For me, I think the difference is 
are, um, are, are there are quite a few differences, and um, f there are some issues that stop me from you or I favour Periscope over Meerkat, and they're, and they're really just technical. Um, as Dustin was saying, that it's sort of the underdog, so it's not as well funded, so their infrastructure doesn't seem to be as good as Periscope's. Um, so that whenever I use it, it pretty much, probably about 75-80% of the time, drops out to such a degree that it's unusable, and I, I just give up. I tried and tried and tried and give up. Another issue with Meerkat is the 30-second delay in commenting. Those comments, um, it's really? really hard to engage. You know, you know I've, had, I've had several broadcasts where the delay has been better or worse, and Eileen Smith actually just commented on Meerkat saying that the HOA's delay is bigger than on Meerkat. Meerkat is more real-time than the HOA. Well, that's not as real-time as Periscope, though, is it? Because Periscope's instant. So the comments come out, you can respond to them instant, instantly, whereas Meerkat, the conversation's moved on 30 seconds later by the time the comment comes out. So yeah, as well, viewer, I have, I've also experienced that with Periscope. I've, I've been on more Periscopes than I have Meerkats, but I've seen some Periscopes with at least a 30-second delay on, on comments, um, but it's, it's much more infrequent than, than Meerkat. I feel like Meerkat's a lot more frequently occurring that it's a delay. Yeah, I don't think Meerkat is ever in real time. It's always thir at least 30 seconds delay in every single time I've used it. Uh, and it means that when you're watching, or even for a non-commenter who's just viewing, um, the, the host has to sort of skip back and forth, and you know they've moved on from the conversation, and a question comes out, they go back, and it's, it's quite disjointed in comparison to Periscope broadcasts that I found. Yeah, I haven't seen that a whole lot. We can test this, though, since Eileen's watching. Eileen... If you're watching here on Meerkat, I want you to type in the word yes. <laughs> and then when I say go, only when I say go, that's when you should hit send on that comment. Does that make sense, Eileen? That's Ready? That's about pressure. Set, go. <laughs> we'll see. And while we're waiting for that, I have uh, a Periscope actually broadcasting at the same time just here uh, on my iPad. And um, thanks for joining, Ollie. I've just seen some people uh, entering the room. I'm just curious if you can hear the audio okay, because I've got headphones in. I've got one headphone on the mic. So um, hopefully we can. We, the, the audio is getting to Periscope. Um, this is quite interesting that right now the four of us are on HOA, but we are also all over Periscope and Meerkat and are being watched through so many different channels and that's such a beauty of live streaming is that it really does allow you to be in so many different places at the same time. That's one of the aspects of the new platforms that I love. Yeah, for sure. And in fact, when I first started on um, Periscope and Meerkat, I, I, would, I would broadcast on both always at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'd have one device um, broadcasting on Meerkat and another one on Periscope. And I was at, when I started out, I was playing guitar, and so I would point one of the v devices at my left hand, which is on the fretboard, and I point the other one at my strumming hand. And so you know you could tune in to either one depending on which hand you wanted to watch, or both if you had two devices. That's pretty clever. That's that a was good fun. One. <laughs> yeah, it was my way of testing which one was the more um, engaging, or the, or the one I got the more viewers on, and it ultimately it ended up to be Periscope. Love it. Yeah, I think I think one thing that's important, and as I've as I've been on more and more live streams, I think a lot of people are having this conversation, and maybe we should just get it out of the way, is that uh, you know people want to know what do you like better and why? You know what what features do you like about Periscope that are better that Meerkat doesn't have? Um, and even though I would call myself a, a Periscope enthusiast. Uh, I do say that Meer Meerkat actually has features that are a little bit more desirable for me. Um, so, you know, just really quickly, Meerkat, I love that Meerkat comments can be tweeted, uh, that you can actually have those comments appear as replies to your tweet. So when you broadcast on Periscope and on Meerkat, you, can, you have the option where you can send out a tweet saying, I'm live, here's a link. Uh, but on Meerkat, when people reply or comment on your live stream, that gets sent as a reply to that tweet. So it's building up the conversation on that tweet. And one thing that uh, myself and Brian Fanzo have done uh, in the past is 
we use that to go back and follow all those commenters mm -hmm. or add them to a list. And we can easily um, you know, strategically find those people who are engaging. And I think that to me is highly valuable for marketers, especially if you're looking to grow an audience and, and be able to understand more about your audience. And uh, the other thing I love about Meerkat is you can put a call to action at the end of the uh, at the end of the broadcast and mm. have people visit a link to your site. You can uh, end the broadcast and you can pre-configure that a, a link shows up in a button, and they click on that button, takes them wherever you want them to go. Say your newsletter sign up or your landing page or your latest blog post. That um, is an excellent feature, and there's a couple more that Meerkat have that's uh, is superior to Periscope in my opinion, and that is scheduling. The, you can oh, schedule yeah. a in advance. That's very handy. Although you can still do that on Periscope, you can actually just do a broadcast, you know, as a primer for your next broadcast. So I did that this morning, for example. I jumped on Periscope a couple of hours ago, and I said, "Hey, come and watch the show in two hours' time." So there's, you know, while it doesn't have scheduling Periscope, uh, you can still promote your stuff beforehand. Um, but that that thing with the tweeting. A lot of people uh, don't turn it on. I, I can't remember if it's on by default or not. There's a tiny, tiny little blue button that says tweet this comment in, Par in Meerkat. And yeah. you, I think you actually have to turn it on. And, and some people uh, don't like all of the fluff going out and filling up their uh, Twitter account with dross. So they turn it off. Yeah, it's, that's, it's interesting. That's one of the reasons why I wouldn't use it because kind of, you know, you have to be conscious of your Twitter stream. You know, your Twitter mm -hmm. followers are not there to follow your Meerkat um, yep. broadcast. So why inundate them with comments that they might not really want to see? So it, it's definitely something to think about. Yeah, well, we were saying this in the pre-roll, too, that just like any Twitter chat, I mean, we most of us are doing Twitter chats on a week weekly basis. I do three or four Twitter chats a week. Uh, I conduct my own. And the same rules can apply, right? I mean, all of my followers aren't going to want to listen to everything that's said on the Twitter chat, but uh, we inundate them anyways. Um, and when it's, it's a little bit more relevant, though, in a Twitter chat because it is on Twitter, whereas this other thing is happening on Meerkat, and your Twitter users aren't necessarily at all interested in what's happening on Meerkat because they're not on Meerkat. And that's they may think, well, what is all this stuff pouring into my... I follow you for your tweets, Points. not for your conversation. Yeah, but the other thing that you have to keep in mind, too, is that these replies, just like an app mentioned, the only way a follower is going to see that at reply is if they're following both users. Yeah. So if they're already following both, you know, for instance, I, I watch a lot of Brian Fanzo's iSocial fans. If they're already following myself and iSocial fans, they're most likely going to be interested in what we have to say. Um, so I, I, I think it's a minimal agitation at best. And it's optional. You can turn it off. Yeah, and it's optional. Yeah, so it's great. But as you but said, there are benefits. If people don't, if people don't turn that off, and it's and it's and they're tweeting out, they're like constant ads for your broadcast. So, you know, there's some some great positives there. Yeah. I have a few questions here. Uh, one from Candy is asking which is more engaging, Periscope or HOA, and what is the difference of this platform when it comes to live streaming, and which do you prefer using? This is a great question that puzzled me for a while when the when both Meerkat and um, Periscope came out because they, they just became so popular so quickly and Hangouts had been there for ages and Hangouts is so superior in so many ways, um, you know, because you can have a more of a, a level uh, conversation on, on a Hangout as we are now. Um, whereas if you know if it's only one person on the camera and, and they've got the mic and no one else has got the camera or the mic and they've just got a, um, only comment uh, text commenting to as a way of engaging, of course Hangouts are, are a far more engaging tool, but it's not as popular and <laughs> it's because of ease of use. I think I mean Periscope and Meerkat, both of them, you just you you hit the download and. Once it's installed, you hit maybe two buttons and you're in and you're, and you're broadcasting it. It's very, very well, more than that. More than that, I think it's about accessibility. The, as much as I love Hangouts on Air 2, they're, they're just complicated. Uh, and from a mobile standpoint, they're near impossible yeah. to watch unless yeah. the, the HOA broadcaster is savvy enough to put a YouTube link in there. Um, you know, then talk about discoverability. 
the, these apps are so easy to jump in and jump out because discovering new ones is so dead simple. It's just a stream of live, of live shows happening right now. Uh, I think Periscope does a, a better job of that um, just because they have the different options. But, um, yeah, I mean, discoverability is so much easier with these apps than, than Hangouts on Air. I mean, you, you really have to be following someone to see that they're broadcasting live. And then let's really hope that you're not on mobile when you catch it because you might be screwed and won't be able to watch it. So, yeah, I think uh, Hangouts and Air offer a lot more for a, an engaging broadcast, but getting people on the broadcast and, you know, the, that discoverability aspect and the ease of use and ease of watching is just not there with Hangouts on Air. Here's a couple. Go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to add, um, this is kind of weird that I'm periscoping myself on the computer versus just, you know, face to face, but anyway, so, you know, on HOA, um, the, I feel personally that the comments are a little bit disconnected, and it's not as easy to have a, an actual conversation uh, with the commentators. I don't see the comments on my screen, I have to switch back to where I can see comments, uh, there is a delay there as well, so it really is not as easy as um, live streaming. So, you know, I, I think Dustin, was it you who said that? I don't feel it's more of a conversation between you and the commentators. It's more of a one-way thing, and then when you get to the comments, you can. So, again, pluses and minuses, but the adoption rate is just so different. So... Um, I don't think HOAs will ever get to any point unless somebody was suggesting today as one of the comments that uh, why doesn't Google do anything about live streaming and bringing, uh, let's say, use their Hangout mobile app as more of a live streaming um, platform versus what it is right now. Well, that's kind of what I've been saying for the last, gosh, how long has Meerkat been out? Uh, well, how long has Periscope been out? Because as soon as Periscope came out and I tried it, I thought, Meerkat's done. They need to get acquired quickly, and the first person that needs to acquire them is Google. Google needs to acquire that technology and incorporate it into Hangouts on Air and finally make Hangouts on Air accessible to people and make it super simple to use. I think, uh, if anything, right now, Google should be their Hangouts team, in particular the Hangouts and Air team and whoever's in charge of the YouTube integration, they need to be watching these live streaming apps very carefully because uh, these, these two little apps have done something that, it, that in three years Google has not been able to do, and that's impressive. Absolutely, absolutely. And by the way, I have a question from Josh on Periscope. He's asking, and let me know what you guys think, uh, do you think Periscope will remain a standalone app owned by Twitter, or eventually they will merge to the point where it's going to be one platform, and it's not just tweeting out you know, live streaming links, but fully integrated? And does it I mean think that's... I think that is inevitable. It's, and if you look at other products that Twitter has uh, acquired, um, you know, they do get integrated. You remember way back with um, TwitPic, you know, remember we had TwitPic and that was just sort of links. They weren't really embedded images. And then, you know, ultimately Twitter um, moved towards embedding images. And, um, you know, I, I don't think... I don't see any reason why that's not going to happen with Periscope as well. I think Periscope videos will be well, embedded in the tweets in the stream. I, I totally agree. But here's the thing that I think is going to happen. I think Periscope will forever, until it dies, it will forever be its a standalone app. I don't think they'll ever make Twitter and Periscope one one company or one uh, one app. But the, the it's like I Vine. do believe it's inevitable that the integration happens. Uh, higher. I, I foresee us seeing live videos in the stream. I, I think that's going to happen very soon, especially with all this testing that uh, Facebook's been doing with uh, with auto-playing videos in the Facebook stream and how many crazy amounts of views they're getting because of that. Uh, I think Periscope, it's just a matter of time before we start seeing those embedded, uh, embedded live streams. Yeah. It, it, Periscope reminds me a lot of, of like, uh, it's it's so much like Vine in that it's, um, well, it's owned by Twitter. It's condensed video. It's short form uh, often. Um, and it just feels a lot like Vine. I mean, I, I jumped on Vine and I really enjoyed making Vine videos. And it, the only thing that stopped me making Vine videos was Periscope. <laughs> I just t I just have put down Vine and, and I've not really touched it since I've been doing Periscope. It's very similar. And see, that's interesting. I've never been a fan of Vine. I've hated Vine from the beginning. <laughs> ah. 
Yeah. It, was, it was so much like t um, a video form of Twitter because you know you've got those same limitations and the limitations of what make it fantastic. You know that 140 character when Twitter first came out, everyone just scoffed and said, "But that's ridiculous! What can you say in such short form?" Well, you can you know look at it now, and same thing <laughs> happened when Vine came out. It's like, oh, six seconds—that's not enough. Well, you know there were some incredibly creative people there. Still are, still going strong. Yeah. But um, I want to. So do, here, I'm curious, what what do you guys love most about Periscope? Uh, you know, I've I've said what I really love most about Meerkat, and bar none, I think Periscope has a beautiful UI, leaps and bounds ahead of Meerkat. Sorry guys, love you. Um, but uh, the user interface is just so much more beautiful. Uh, I think the discoverability features, the ability to to find new scope scopes happening is is incredible. But what do you guys what do you guys love most about Periscope? Oh, I think the saving the video is a is a big uh, oh, yeah. thing it has over Meerkat. Um, to be able to uh, have that hang around for 24 hours and then disappear, I think is is really good. It's I like it more than staying forever. You know, I think if it, these were to be like YouTube and for for there to be there eternally, it wouldn't be as good. There's some sort of freedom and liberation in knowing that all your mistakes and stuff ups are going to go away in 24 hours and I don't know. It's just it keeps a bit of a live feel to it as well that they're right. not recorded. But on top of that, I mean, it's that psychology that Gary Vaynerchuk has been talking about for, gosh, I think a couple years now. It's the Snapchat mentality, the the fear of missing out, FOMO syndrome, fear of missing out. The fact that this video is going to be gone in 24 hours makes it, I think, that much more exciting for people to want to jump on. It's like if if I'm, and and that to me seems like Meerkat has the higher allure or the higher psychological weight in the uh, the urgency of watching things because on Meerkat there's no saving unless you use a uh, Meerkast, but uh, you know li literally on Meerkat if you miss the the live stream you miss it all. Um, on Periscope, I love that you have that 24 hours, but I mean, it's still kind of there that if I don't watch this in the next 24 hours, I'm never going to get to see it. So it's, I think it's a, a very yeah. smart feature. But you, me can't say... Sorry, Chef, go. I was going to say, you can record your Periscope, though. You, you can, can yeah. yeah. You can save it to I was your just, roll and then upload it to YouTube if you really want to. Yeah, it automatically you, know, you never know when someone's going to do that. It's it's just the default feature now with Periscope. They've made that that it just automatically happens. So you all of your videos are all on your camera roll. Is that the same with Meerkat? That that would be, wouldn't it? It's just using your internal camera. It's going to go to your camera roll. Um, last I checked, I I believe it does automatically. Yeah. Believe so it. then you could take that video and upload it, and this is what a lot of people are doing. They're just um, Actually, some of them are just using the YouTube app on their phone and just hitting upload, and as soon as that um, Periscope video is finished, they'll upload it to YouTube. The problem with that is, obviously, it's in portrait mode. Video on yeah. YouTube is in landscape mode. So I've, I've gotten around that by just putting a backdrop, but you've still got the strip down the middle. You know, the, yeah. the, the, you can fill the gaps on the sides, but it's not being really utilized fully. As, as someone who comes from the film industry, that's like a carnal sin. I can't bring myself to upload a, a vertical video unless I well, plan this is, on editing heavily. This is, another, this is another aspect I see people out in the wild, they feel like there's some kind of shame to be holding your phone up the right way, and so I see a lot of periscopes that are side on, and all the comments are going sideways, and you can also <laughs> turn side on to read them, and it's like, come on guys, this is periscope, put it up the, up the portrait. Yeah, well, like, no, no, and it's like... In, in the there's, beginning, there's a, Meerkat actually accommodated for this. The The user interface would actually switch when you turned it sideways. It would turn sideways, and yeah. it would somewhat accommodate a landscape uh, style, but I guess because they couldn't perfect it, they've, they've now taken that away. So well, there's lots of reasons why you don't... There's lots of reasons why portrait is superior to landscape. And one of them is the comments. The comments, if you you know, if you're going to turn it side on, you've only got a third. I mean, you're going to have to read yeah. three times as fast for those comments. They're just going to whiz by. Uh, second is most of the most of the videos that you see are of talking heads of people, and people are uh, portrait long, tall people. You know, they're not lying flat on the on the side. So the only reason you would want a landscape is if you're doing something like a sunset or some landscape, <laughs> literal landscape videoing. If you're just doing talking heads, like the majority of them are, portrait is is way superior. So you know, for the comments and for that reason. I think portrait was the way to go, but I have heard rumors that um, Periscope are going to introduce a landscape mode, and I, they, maybe they have some way of scrolling 
the comments like a ticker sideways. I don't know how they're going to deal with that, but that, oh, that's another thing about the differences between Meerkat and Periscope is the commenting. In Periscope, the comments just sort of disappear so quickly. Oh my gosh, Meerkat, nothing Meerkat, you can, <laughs> Yeah, on Meerkat at least you can scroll back and, and see some comments if you miss them. Um, but if you've got more than, say, 10 people in a room and, and some of them, half of them are commenting actively, I mean, that's all it takes and, and it's hard to keep up. So they need, to, uh, they Bush, need to have scrolling Stan comments. Bush. Uh, Stan Bush is wanting to know about Angle. Do you guys know anything of that? Because which is still ahead of both of the apps? Never heard of it. I think I've What's heard of Stanford? Angle, but uh, not recently. Is it an acronym or something? I don't know. Stan, you want to tell us more about that? <laughs> Maybe we should bring Stan onto the conference. <laughs> I think I had quite a few discussions about people who have been live streaming through different apps before Periscope and Meerkat came to live. But the problem with those apps is adoption. Honestly, to be honest with you, most of us are not doing live streaming because we have nothing better to do. It's because it's beneficial in some ways to us because that's what social media is about. And most of us have businesses of some sort which we do hope to promote in one shape or form or promote ourselves as a way to promote our businesses. So if I am on a, an app that is excellent at live streaming but it has it's a standalone app and it's basically a social media platform of its own with even if it's a, a few hundred thousand users it's still very limited so for me to spend my time on a platform that does not integrate with something much bigger than the platform is really a waste of time yep. in many ways, and that's why we don't do it right and on. That's why I think Dustin you talked about a little bit about it before um, we started talking um, before we went live. Uh, the reason why we all like Periscope over Meerkat, among other things, is because of the fact that Twitter backs it up. There's something a lot bigger behind Me uh, Periscope than Meerkat or any other live streaming uh, platform out there currently. And that having that kind of support and backup behind an app is absolutely huge and that's one of the reasons why we feel comfortable um, investing our time and effort in learning it, in acquiring followers, in being on it consistently because we hope that it will um, pay a lot better in the long run than any other platform out there. That's, that's a great topic, um, using Periscope in biz, business and Meerkat. Um, you know, there's a really amazing, powerf uh, powerful aspect of Meerkat is that it um, because of the tweet integration, there it's a lot easier to use Bitcoin and change chip and to be able to make money on on Meerkat is easier than Periscope, um, only because of the Twitter integration. I can't see the Periscope. I mean, I, I think it's inevitable that Periscope's going to have to um, integrate better with Twitter as soon as they own it. Ironically, it's Meerkat that's more integrated. But to be able to just say, at change chip one dollar. And that's it. You've given a dollar to the broadcaster. That is incredibly powerful, and I can see um, that uh, that has to come to Periscope. I need to be able to uh, do the same thing on Periscope to be able to busk on the guitar and say, "Hey, give us a couple of dollars in my digital hat." Um, just to give you an example, if I may, just uh, take the mic for a couple of minutes. Um, I met up with uh, a lovely girl here in Australia who's the top meerkat. She's, I think, one of the top 20 on the leaderboard in, in the world. She's certainly the, the most popular meerkatter in Australia. Her name's String Story, Suzanne. And she um, was using meerkat right, right at day one. Um, and she was using it to, well, shortly after meerkat launched, the Nepal earthquakes happened. And so she thought, why don't I use this Bitcoin and change tip, this way of donations uh, using Bitcoin, if I can just use Meerkat to raise funds for, for Nepal in this way. And she raised hundreds and hundreds of dollars in Bitcoin. Um, and she just sent it all to the Red Cross and it all went to the Nepal earthquake. And she just became famous out of uh, that and a couple of other things like that that she did. And uh, a YouTube sensation came to her and said, oh, look, I want you, I'm going to be touring around Australia, I want you to be my Mere guide and do Meerkat broadcasting. So she had this job of, of 
<laughs> touring Australia, and she's this just happened. I think she finished last week, and she popped into Adelaide, and when she came thin, came through Adelaide, we met up and had lunch together and talked all about Bitcoin and and how the future of making money is 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 uh, so easy with Bitcoin. And she she didn't have any money. She didn't have any cards. She was living a life on Bitcoin. And she is still doing that, and she's, that's the only way she makes money. It's the only way she spends money, and she's just given up money and is using Bitcoin, and she's doing it quite successfully. Um, so I, I can see, yeah, I can see the Bitcoin integration with these both platforms as a huge uh, draw card for a lot of people for business. Yeah, that's fascinating. We had, uh, so anyway, from uh, Scott Scowcroft, he wanted to know. Uh, if a if I'm a blogger, what value is either Periscope or Meerkat to me? Oh gosh! Oh man! Can I take this one? Please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you are a blogger, <sighs> okay. So we know that there are different types of audiences. Different people interpret things different ways. Different people learn in different ways. Some people are predisposed to reading. Some people love to read. Bloggers, we love people who love to read, right? But there are certain people who will never sit there and read. They'll scan, they'll look at your, your headlines and your sub points and look at your pretty images, but they're just not going to read. So some people, all they're, they're looking for is video. Some people just spend all day on, on YouTube. Some people, all they listen to is podcasts. They're audio people. Periscope and Meerkat make it so dead simple for you to convert your blog post into a video that it's almost inexcusable. I mean, if... What I plan on doing, when, now that uh, things have calmed down a little bit, I, I mean to do this every day. Um, I, I hold a daily Periscope, almost daily, um, where I'm talking about coffee and social media. And if I had published a blog post on that day or earlier that morning, then I make sure that I talk about it on that Periscope. And uh, you know, I get a little, a little bit of a value add because it adds an extra layer to my content. And if I ever want to take that video and repurpose it, I can do that. But it gives people who would never read my blog post the opportunity to get the content of my post. And uh, I, I just think it's so easy. You can have your, your blog sitting here on your camera screen. You can sit here on Meerkat and literally just read your blog post. It, it couldn't be easier. Your script is already written for you. So if any blogger wants to add that extra layer of, of video and potentially audio and make it dead simple for themselves, uh, Periscope and Meerkat is there. Three clicks and you're, you're recording. I can see Periscope and, and Meerkat being very good for customer service as well. To be able to just reach out uh, to say, oh, I mean, I'm, do I'm already doing this. I'm using Periscope for customer service all the time and helping people uh, directing directly contacting them th you through a private periscope and and helping them with uh, tutorials. Sorry, Anna, you were going to say. Oh no 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 not at all. Um, I was just going to say that um, I think to me live streaming the fact that it's unscripted it allows you as Dustin said just jump in at any time. You can actually crowdsource your content because if you have a content idea you can go. Uh, to Periscope with it, and you can just talk it out with people. Uh, you can hear the questions that they ask, and it's an incredible tool to actually generate content ideas um, that way. And again, you know, uh, as Dustin said, you know, most of us don't publish more than once a week. Most of us don't. And yet, you know, being in front of your potential audience more than once a week is huge. And Periscope, I mean, you can jump on for five, ten minutes, and uh, you know, it will stay as a replay for 24 hours. It'll get shared, it'll get tweeted. Uh, you'll get that exposure for only ten minutes a day. I, I, I don't know of any blog post that I can write that will give me equal uh, amount of exposure, you know, to my audience. So that's Absolutely. one thing that I love about live streaming. Yeah, and I meant to touch on the fact that Meerkat again, has that call to action at the end. You can create a button that shows up at the end of the, your broadcast that can send that people to a link that you want. So as a blogger, you fire up a broadcast about your new blog post, make that call to action a link to that blog post, and say, hey, here's five of my ten tips that I just shared in today's blog post, one, two, three, four, five. Get the other five on the full blog post at, at the end of the broadcast. Hit the button. Done. Boom. That, that's, a, that's a good point for... Um, 
practice as well, not just, you're talking about a technical aspect of Meerkat, I mean, the same can be done and should be done across all platforms, of course, you know, we know that, that you always end with a call to action, and on Periscope, you can do that by saying, um, well, you know, the standard is uh, swipe to the right, follow me, so that you, you know, so that you know yeah. about my next podcast, but you can also say, and I do this a lot now, um, I got actually this from uh, Instagram, where, it, you know, how Instagram, you've got that your bio, you've got a link in there, and you can use that and change that every day, and say you should as well, and and then you can just say, hey, go and look at my bio for the link, and so I do that on Periscope and change the bio and the link, and say, hey, if you want any more information, just go and click on my bio. So you know you can still uh, implement um, yeah. manually these calls to actions. Yeah, definitely. But also, I I've noticed. I don't know if you can support that as well, guys, but. Um, since I started using Periscope, my Twitter followers and Twitter engagement went up considerably because it's, it's it's incredible how many people actually go from Periscope to Twitter and look you up on Twitter and then follow up on the conversation or say, hey, love the Periscope, thank you so much for the idea, or whatever it is, or ask follow-up questions. So Periscope is not isolated to Periscope. It opens up the gates of, you know, social media exposure on other platforms as well. And it's also nice to encourage that as well by, as you said, Vin, you know, you can always just say, you can find me on Twitter, or, you know, after we get off, go to Twitter and look me up at blah, 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 and ask me a question. Very easy to do. Even though I do wish they had the call to action button like Meerkat does, that's an incredible tool, of course. Uh, but we have to remember that Periscope is um, a lot younger as a public app um, than Meerkat, and they haven't had quite as much time to work out their features. And I'm sure a lot more is to come. Well, the funny part about that is Periscope was actually in development for over a year. Uh, they developed Meerkat, I think, in, it was in a, a couple of months. And so technically, Periscope is the older company by a significant amount of months. Um, but you are right in that they, they haven't been field testing it as long. That's true. And I think, from what I remember, they first started not as a live streaming app, but more of a photo-oriented um, app. So it took them a while to kind of found, find their... Uh, find what they want to do, what they grow up. So, um, and I'm sure they have a lot of pressure at the moment from Twitter to come up with all the features. And um, you remember um, Mary Scope CEO on stage of um, Tech, um, TechCrunch Disrupt New York uh, conference recently where he was saying that they will not put out any half-baked features. And that's the reason why they didn't do Periscope for Android at the time. And yet, you know, three weeks later, we'll have a half-baked Periscope on Android. So <laughs> I don't even know what to say about it. I tried to do Periscope on Android. It's horrible. I completely hate it. And actually, when I wrote my Periscope for Android tutorial, I basically, and Vin was laughing with me because I told the users, hey, if you need to do something on Periscope, borrow a friend's iPhone so that you can change your bio, you can change your picture, because you can't do any of that on Android. So I guess the pressure of being owned by a bigger company and everything that comes with it is great that they have that kind of you know, backing behind them, but it also does make them move a lot faster than otherwise they would have. Yeah. Hey, I was wondering, how about... Have, have have you all got some tips? I would I would love to just blast out a whole bunch of tips to our our viewers here. And uh, what do you reckon? Sure. Well, the one thing that I sort of ranted about ooh, a couple weeks ago now um, with my buddy Dave Shrine, who is a Periscope uh, maniac. The one thing that I cannot stand, and I see this a lot on Periscope. I don't see it happen on Meerkat a lot a little bit, but definitely more on Periscope where people will fire up a broadcast and say, hey guys, ask me questions and have literally nothing to say. So if, the, if I had one tip, never, ever, ever hit broadcast unless you have something to say. Don't just go on to have people entertain you. Uh, you're going to lose followers really quickly if all you're doing is hitting broadcast and saying, ask me a question, guys. I'll answer stuff. <laughs> And if you do end up doing something stupid like that, 
at the end of the broadcast delete it. Don't keep it for replay because that's another way you lose even more followers because they'll go to the broadcast, see that you are just a dumb, you know, <laughs> and will unfollow you very quickly. So, uh, and yeah, uh, Josh on Periscope is saying some people broadcast while they sleep. You know, and Dustin, you remember in the beginning of Periscope, the first two weeks, it was all about the fridge. What's fridge. in your fridge? Oh my gosh. I got so sick of hearing the word fridge. <laughs> I know. Oh, there's... Been at some point, and you showed people some uh, your fridge as well, but I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. We have nothing better. All of a sudden, the yeah. word is listening to them, but we have nothing to say. How frustrating is that? <laughs> Yeah, I, and see, I, I think the reason is because at the beginning it was a lot of younger folks jumping on Periscope because it was, uh, I think it was given a little bit of priority in the App Store, uh, if I'm honest. And um, you know, the who who do you think's in the App Store more than anybody, the the younger generation? So is it a lot of younger people jumping on Periscope talking about fridges and you know it became a thing. Uh, it was very immature at first, and uh, whereas Meerkat conversations tend to be a lot more mature. They tend to be a lot more uh, intellectual, and uh, you know that that's that, that's just how it was at the beginning. But I have seen Periscope take a turn for a more mature audience, and more intellectual conversation. Um, but yeah, guys, have something to say. Have something intelligent to say. Have something of value to say if you really want to grow a following on either at, on any live stream platform. I mean, you there's never been a case of a hangout on air. Well, maybe if you ask me any things, but. Um, or somebody just fired up a hangout on air and said, you know, ask me questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's where it came from, isn't it? The Reddit sort of started that trend. It's like, just right. turn up and ask me anything. It's, yeah, it's extremely boring on video. Um, Definitely. Yeah. But, and uh, but, also, um, my... Go ahead, Ben. No, no, go, Anna. <laughs> well, I just wanted to follow the suit and answer your question about the tips. Uh, I think one of the things that I would say is to be prepared with a stump speech of, course, uh, of sorts to walk your um, followers through a Periscope broadcast because you have to remember that a lot of them joined you uh, for the first time. So you do need to introduce yourself. You do need to tell them what Periscope cards are because many of them do not know. They don't know that you need to tap on the screen and that's the equivalent of applause on Periscope sort of your way to encourage the broadcasters to do better, to agree with them, those kind of things. But people don't know that. People don't know that you can share the broadcast, so you can tell them how to do that. What I do sometimes is I actually have my family. Uh, so my eight-year-old has an iPad and my husband has an iPad. I don't. So I have to borrow theirs to do periscopes. So I will hold my daughter's iPad and show people while I'm on, my, I'm on my husband's iPad, does that make sense? I show them how to share broadcast, how to tap on the screen to give hearts, how to do all of those things because people simply don't know. So when you start a Periscope broadcast, don't expect everyone to know what to do, to know how to drop a comment or hide the chat or block people. You have to let them know all those things. And again, you know, there are no links, there are no no way to identify yourself but the fact that you can tell them who you are or you can put um, like a, a picture on your screen that tells people, you know, I am so and so from such and such website and hope that they will remember. But really, for the most part, broadcast live streaming is about personal branding versus click on this link to go somewhere. So um, definitely give your viewers kind of choices of what they can do. And another thing is that remember it takes people a, a few minutes to show up for the broadcast, but there's nothing worse than people just hanging out in silence at the beginning of the broadcast waiting for someone, anyone to show up. So yeah. it, it, that is a that is a skill that uh, is is needs to be developed. You need to be able to delay for at least say two minutes, but be entertaining. You can't just sit there like you right. said, like Anna said. You can't just sit right. there and wait. Yeah, but you you should create some kind of entertaining discussion pre-show in that in that air, in that zone where people are flowing into the room, because um, if you start off immediately. 
you're going to have to sort of recap as people come in because there'll only be maybe one person at the at the moment you start the broadcast, and it's going to be two minutes before the room fills sometimes. Right, so that's and that's important. such an awkward little time too. I've mm. I myself have been challenged to try and think of what to do in that time because you know it's just going to take a while. And I think Dave Shrine, my buddy, does a, a really great job at this. Uh, he what he tends to do. This is what I've noticed about him is he tends to sort of talk about where he's at. So he'll start introducing, uh, he won't introduce the subject matter yet, he'll just start saying, hey guys, you know, it's this this time, I'm in this place, man, I just came from this thing, and he'll he'll just start sort of talking about his context. Um, and then, you know, after about two minutes or so, I've noticed, he's like, all right guys, well, here's what we wanted to talk today, and he's, he's gotten really good at that. So if anything, you know, just start doing it. Practice, practice vamping is what we call it in the... Uh, in the showbiz. Well, another thing is to is to actually greet every single person that comes in and look at their name. Don't oh, yeah. just read out their Twitter handle. Tap on their profile and look at what their name is and address them by name and say thank you for coming. And you know that heart thing? The hearts is a really good uh, instant feedback. They're like uh, live plus ones as Anna said. Um, and you do need to remind people. You know, I, I sometimes even forget. I'm thinking, yeah, this is great. This is great. Well, type the hearts then. Why don't you? You know, um, it's not just about accumulating like this point scoring to get on the leaderboard or anything. It's like the most value I think of the hearts is that instantaneous feedback. So that when I see a lot of people streaming hearts at me, I know, oh, this is okay. This is what people want to hear. So I'll keep talking about this. Um, but in that first two minutes, I'll actually use that time to recap yesterday's show so that um, you know it's something that's interesting. If people did miss yesterday's show, they get to find out what it's about. But it doesn't, um, it's not too waffly and it's not too much of a delay, but it's enough to, to delay the beginning of the show for the, for the people to enter the room. But, but you know, I have a million comments. If I could just fire off a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, I'll just go. Um, minutes before the broadcast, or even sometime before the broadcast, I'll set up images. I'll create images and post them on Instagram, Flickr, Google+, everywhere, telling the time of the broadcast and the content and with some enticing um, headline. And those are ways of, of, of great ways of advertising uh, on those other platforms so that people who may not even know about Periscope or Meerkat um, we'll learn about it, and then it's also good if you can in those long-form ads like Google Plus or Facebook, where you've got some space, to include a link to the Android and the iOS version of the app, if, whether it be Periscope or Meerkat, whatever your broadcast is on. If you include those, then it makes it a lot easier for people to come into the into this uh, world, whether it be Meerkat or Periscope. Keep going, or you want? Okay, you want to have a crack, Dustin or Anna? Well, I can keep talking. Uh, You're muted, Anna. Go ahead, Anna. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, well, I mean, another thing that I've noticed on on both platforms, any platform really, when it when it comes to live streaming, is I mean, you you have to sort of think of yourself as a host. Uh, you are you are hosting a show. Um, and if you look at any great radio broadcaster or late night TV shows, they know how to fill space. So any any time that there's dead space, there's dead energy, um, or your energy is down, uh, you have to you have to be aware of it, and uh, you have to continue to maintain the energy, maintain 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 the uh, the energy and and uh, the atmosphere. Um, it's it's not an easy thing. So if uh, like I, I mean I guess that goes back to do you have anything to say? Do you have something to talk about? If you don't have anything to talk about, there's going to be a lot of dead space, and uh, people are going to get bored really quickly. So, I mean, like any good speaker uh, in the world, your energy should be up. You know, you should be sitting up. Uh, as soon as you start slouching and going back, people freak out, just like uh, my son in the background. <laughs> no, uh, but you want to you want to keep the energy up. You want to keep uh, engaged. Uh, try to look at the camera. Not look at yourself. Try to look at the camera. Uh, another good little tip for you. How long should a broadcast be? Oh, that's a good right. question. It depends on the content, but I, I would say there's um there's two camps on this. Some say really short. Some say really long. There's pros and cons of both, of course. If you do it really short, 
Um, I try to keep mine around 15 minutes, but sometimes they spread out to 30 minutes because uh, the engagement, people have convers uh, questions that I, I answer so it can go a bit longer. But I found that these really long ones that go longer than a half an hour, it, it, it's sort of like a moving audience. You know, people come and go, and people might get bored, but then because it's long, it's long enough for other people to see and come in later. So, you know, you may have some people coming in 20 minutes after it started, whereas that's not going to happen if your broadcast is only 15 minutes long. So, you know, it depends totally on your topic. If you're doing a cooking show, you don't want to have that be 10 minutes. It has to be a long form. So, um, on that topic, though, there is a great person that you should follow called Jenna, Nes Jenna Nesbitt, I think that's her name. She does a cooking show. And she, she gave me this tip that I was unaware of. And it was, if you've got a second screen, like if you're doing the broadcast on an iPhone and you've got an iPad, get the iPad and log on to your stream as, as, as yourself. You won't be able to broadcast through that, sc that second screen, but you'll be able to use it to read comments. And so this is what Jenna does. She, broad she has the phone at the end of the counter broadcasting the cooking, but she'll have the iPad on the counter and she can look down and read the comments. And that way she can respond to people's comments without having to run back to the camera and stare at the camera. That's actually what I was going to do because I tried doing it with my tablet, my Android tablet, and it didn't work because I couldn't get it to, to go the right way. But my wife has an iPad, so I figured I could use that and then keep the phone or one of them close by so I could read the comments. Another great tip is the microphone. If, if you've been watching some periscopes um, and you find that people switch the camera back and forth, like they'll be talking, and so they'll show their face, and they'll say, oh, look at this, and they'll flip the camera to the, to the front no, sorry, to the back camera. You notice that the volume drops considerably when they go to the back camera. Um, if you have a microphone plugged in, that's not going to happen. Even if it's just your your earbuds, you know, you, with the mic in in line, plugging that in will will get over that problem of the dip in volume when you switch cameras. Good tip. Good tip. Yes, I haven't never considered that, but that's a great one, Ben. Thank you. And by the way, Pepper says hello. Pepper comes to every single pod, uh, broadcast I do, almost. I do one every day called Conversations with Siri. It's on at the same time every day, but often Pe Pepper's driving home or is not able to make that one. And it's, If I do another one with my gardening ones, I do gardening with my cat. My cat's really hopeless. He doesn't. I tell him to weed, but he doesn't do anything. Well. It, it just goes to sleep in the, in the veggie patch. Um, but yeah, Pepper's always there, so thanks, Pepper. Um, I've got a tip that I had to think about. So, when you, um, you know, Periscope is getting crowded like any other social media platform out there, right? So, we need uh, more and more ways to find more and more ways to stand out. And what I found personally for me, so when I go through my Periscope live stream and I decide to watch a broadcast or a replay, I always, always pay attention to, especially when it's my broadcast, always pay attention to people who visit it, watch the broadcast, and it always stands out in the list of people who watched who gave hearts or how many hearts they gave. And that goes for plays as well. And I think this is one of my tips, is that whenever you, first of all, watch a lot of broadcasts because people will start seeing your name. It's like leaving a comment almost because you will be listed in the list of users. So, you know, if somebody keeps going to different broadcasts and they see your name at the top of every list, and especially if they see they see that you give hearts and you're kind of generous with that, chances are they'll start checking you out and you'll get more followers that way. That's sort of a little trick that I've test, tested out lately and it is really working very nicely because I know that for me personally I do that with people who view my broadcasts all the time and I tend to go back to Twitter and I tend to thank them for joining me and giving me hearts and possibly even following them. So that's, you know, be generous. I, I think Chef Dennis and I kind of talked about it um, previously about sharing content, you know, and be generous about that because that's the biggest compliment that you can give to someone. Well, in Periscope, it's sharing broadcast and giving out heart. So don't be stingy. Stand out that way. Very cool. Here's a comment Thanks. from Terry Johnson. Uh, she says, try using X Mirage on your laptop to read comments while doing a scope. 
Well, that's nothing new. Thanks, Terry. I have not heard of that either. This will be interesting to try. Thank you, Terry. Definitely give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Dustin, Ben? Um, I was just posting a comment in the stream there. Uh, okay, after the broadcast, uh, swipe to the right and have a look at all the people that attended your broadcast. Uh, this is on Periscope. Um, you, will, you will be able to see how many hearts they gave you. You won't be able to see uh, how many who was commenting, which is a thing I'd love to see in future updates on Periscope. Is um, but, but if you go and have a look at how many people gave you hearts, I then go and uh, tweet every single one of those people after the broadcast, and I say thank you for giving me hearts on today's broadcast. Um, and, and if I do uh, have some engaging conversation th in the broadcast and I can remember the people's names, I'll go and contact them uh, and also thank them for their participation in today's uh, broadcast. So engaging with people by following up after the broadcast just keeps, keeps the connection and strengthens it um, on, on Twitter or on their other platform. Very good. Well, guys... Uh, we are getting close to the end of this then. It has been a wonderful hour of ideas and ways to use Periscope and Meerkat and, you know, use them both, make your own decision. But, I, you know, I think I tend to agree that uh, with Twitter owning Periscope, uh, that may end up being the way to go. But, again, you never know what's going to happen out there. It's a crazy world. So, Vin, Dustin... Anna, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And, uh, guys, if you have any links you'd like to leave our audience, uh, please feel free to leave any links you want to in the comment stream. And uh, make sure you follow all three of these people on Meerkat and Periscope, and uh, you'll be able to see them when they broadcast. So thanks for coming, and I will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. as we continue the third annual virtual bloggers conference live. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.